one long-term play. Last time we had a double long-term play, but this week we have just the one. And then we could probably imagine what it is because it's the one book we haven't really talked about so far that was fire this week. And that is Walking Dead 193. And Jack's got an awesome story to talk about on his mission for this issue, correct? Correct. I'm putting the phone down. I got to get fully focused here. Um, So I talk to you guys. As you know, I interact with you guys on the Comic Book Invest CBSI Instagram. I interact with you guys on the Comic Book Invest Facebook group. I interact with you guys here through Simpleman's Comics. And one thing that we talk about on a regular basis is retailer practices. And I, I, my heart goes out to you guys when you guys get really kind of shafted by a retailer where when a book gets hot and, you know, different games are played at retail level. Um, I always feel for you guys and I always advocate to you guys, you know, cover pr- books that are intended to be cover price should be cover price, especially on release day and honestly, even the week of release. And everybody blames the crash in the comic book market on this or that. But you can go back to Death of Superman and, you know, every retailer that was marking that book up on release date and trying to take advantage of these speculators are equally as to blame. So I had an experience this week that is not dissimilar to anything that you guys have gone through. Um, My position in CBSI or my position on this channel doesn't provide me with any sort of special privilege. Um, When I walk into an LCS, yes, at times I am recognized. Yes, at times um, people may know me, but uh, I still run into the same things you guys I, in full transparency, because this is this is our Simple Men's Comics fan, um, I'm going to talk about it. So um, this week, like most people, I did not heavily pre-order Walking Dead, one number 193. Um, matter of fact, I only ordered a couple copies. So I knew my copies wouldn't be coming in for a while, so I wanted to go ahead and get at least a copy to read. Also, Topher, uh, I believe it was Topher, I could be wrong. But I, I believe it was Topher in the chat had mentioned that it was a good father-son story to read. Obviously, I'm going through the situation with my father, and um, I really wanted to check it out. Also, yesterday, uh, on release date, was my birthday. So what I wanted to do for my birthday was go pick up Walking Dead 193 and read it. That was my thing I wanted to do for myself. So usually, I would go into Charlotte, which is about 40 minutes away. Well, it, Charlotte's closer. It's like 20. But to get to the store in Charlotte, heroes aren't hard to find, who are the promoters of um, Heroes Con. Shout out to Sheldon Drum. It's about 40 minutes. And um, yesterday I had to meet with a funeral director. I had an appointment to meet with a funeral director. So it was going to be very difficult to make it out there. And I went to a closer store called Nickel Spot Comics in Fort Mill, South Carolina. And uh, that is the town right next to me. It's actually the town I went to high school it's a town I grew up in in South Carolina, um, and uh, while it is closer, it is not the store I typically shop at for reasons like I'm going to get into. So I walked into the store, and I walked up to the new release wall. Now, again, it's only like an hour and 45 minutes after the store opened, and this is not a heavily trafficked store. It's, it's so unheavily trafficked that they're actually closing the store and turning it into an office where they're going to just sell online. Now, I will say that the owner of Nickel Spot is a a gentleman by the name of Nick. Um, I've known him through the convention scene for some time. I don't know if he knows me. Um, He's a nice guy. I know a lot of people within the industry know him or may be familiar with him at shows. But like a lot of guys who travel the convention circuit, he's rarely in his own store. And um, some of the retail practices of that store have bothered me in the past. Things like... uh, you know, like um, non-ratio variants not being available on release day. But then I go to a show that weekend and they've got them at their booth for $10 and $12. That bothers me as a customer. I, I, if I'm in your store on release date, I should have access to that. So to get back to Walking Dead, and I've already got that thought in my head about those prior experiences, I walk up to the new release wall and I don't see Walking Dead anywhere. Now they've got everything. They've got Sea of Stars and they've got all these great releases but they don't have Walking Dead anywhere. So I walk up to the counter and I ask a uh, young guy whose name is Tyler, who I, I hadn't seen in there before. Maybe he's there all the time. I really don't know. Um, and I ask him, 
you know, do you have Walking Dead 193? And his response to me floored me. Now, usually I'm the type of guy who I don't, I don't say anything back. It's not um, the type of thing where, like, I, what, me saying anything does, isn't going to make a difference. But what he told me was that they don't have any copies available. Well, wait, we do, but they're $15 on our eBay. Now, again, mind you guys, this is an hour and 45 minutes after this store opened. They've only had this book for that long. And they're telling me that they sold all of their copies off the wall that are available, and the book is available for $15 on eBay. Now, all of, we're CBSI. We sell books, right? When you sell a book on eBay for $15, and you subtract shipping, and you subtract your fees, how much more money were they really making by doing that? But you know what they did? They lost a customer in me forever. Because I, the audacity of you to tell me that, I immediately responded that it's, it's release date. That, do, that doesn't seem right. The kid just kind of laughed. Like he didn't know what to say. Um, mind you, I'm in there, I got my CBSI shirt on when I'm in there. I was in there with a CBSI shirt on. Um, and I have this platform to talk about it. And it's, this is not vindictive to that store. Again, that store is closing. They're moving to an online only thing. Um, they, you know, He tried to mention to me, like, well, our subscribers we took care of. Yeah, but how do you ever expect to get new subscribers or new customers if when someone walks into your store on release date excited to get a book to read, they don't have access to it, but then you try to pump me for $15 on a sale? I'd rather have had him lie to me and tell me the book just sold out than to tell me it's available on his eBay for 15 which, by the way, I would have found out on my own anyway because they sell under their own name. And again, it's an hour and 45 minutes. A bad excuse is, well, we order a certain amount for the store and we order a certain amount for our, our eBay. That's, that's a bad excuse. Because then you got to ask yourself, what are you? What did Image Comics, what would, what would Image Comics say to that story? How would Robert Kirkman feel about that story? This is a triple issue. This is 72 pages. He could have charged $10 for this issue himself. But he charged $3.99 because he wanted this in the hand of readers, people who were invested in The Walking Dead. Guys, I wasn't trying to get 10 copies. Uh, there I go with guys again. I wasn't trying to get 10 copies. I wasn't trying to get this from a speculator perspective. I just wanted to read this book. It was my birthday. My dad passed the day before. A friend of mine told me that this would be a good story for me to read on that day. And I wanted to read it. And now he didn't know all of that had other stuff going on in my life or anything else. But for, to walk into a store and have that kind of experience, it's no wonder they're closing their retail store. It's no wonder that, that, that they don't see that as a profitable endeavor for them. Because, guys, you guys know me. I talk about how many books do you think I buy on a monthly basis? Do you know what my comic book bill is for a month? I walked into their store. Do you know they had every previous week's release on sale for a dollar? And I'm doing a co big convention in a month, so I'm preparing my convention booth. You, they have no idea the amount of money I could have spent going through all of that clearance product. But once you do that, you're not getting my money. I'm not spending a dollar with you. Because, again, for $3 or $4 more that you tried to hit me for, you just lost a couple hundred dollars and you lost a customer that could have represented thousands of dollars in a year's time. Also, I have this platform and now I'm talking about you. So retailers, any retailers watching us, I know we got some good ones in the chat. Um, I know I, I work on a regular basis with Russ Bright from Mill Geek Comics, um, who does the Hot 10 show, who always talks about the value of trying to establish a long-term customer. This is a guy that when Naomi was or Naomi, excuse me, Naomi was hitting for uh, fifty dollars, was honoring his customers with cover price copies. And you may say, well, oh, you missed out on forty bucks. Forty bucks is nothing compared to what a loyal customer will provide you in a year. So I want you guys to know I've been through it. I went through it. I still don't have a copy of Walking Dead one ninety three. Um and it was really a bummer of a situation to kind of go through. And 
I just think that you retailers out there, if any retailers who are watching us, we have a lot of retailers who follow us, a lot of retailers who interact with us. Don't do things like that, guys. Don't look for cash outs. On release date, your books should be release price. That is your agreement with, you know, that is that is your agreement with your customer. Um, there is plenty of time a, a week later. Give it to the weekend at least. But to hit it an hour and 45 minutes after release date, that's garbage. You know good and well you saw what the market was doing and you made a conscious decision to try to get as much money out of that book as possible. And that is just bad business. And what you guys don't know and what they don't know is my background. I went to the University of South Carolina, the degree in retail management. I have managed some large sneaker retailers and um, there's no way that I would ever advocate anybody that I manage, any company that I've worked for, to be so short-sighted financially because um, they, they really blew it. They really blew it. I won't step foot into that store. And I advocate you guys, don't keep shopping at stores that do that to you. Look for other stores. The loudest – you may not have a microphone like I do right here to go jump on the mic and I know I'm ranting and wasting everyone's time but I just I felt like this is something we needed to talk about because a lot of people complain about this to me and I want you guys to know how I handled it I didn't get mad in the store or throw a fit um, I did tell them that I thought that that was you know shady on release day but the way the biggest way I can speak to it is not even on the mic right now it's with my wallet it's by putting my wallet away it's by not even shopping with their convention booth at conventions. Not because I'm vindictive, but because people need to be held accountable. And there's plenty of places to buy comics, guys. There's plenty of people out there. Um, a one person, uh, Bat Comic Shop, who we've talked about before, they, they've they sold books on release date for $3.99 that were selling for $15 bucks on day all the time. There's plenty of places out there where you guys can get hooked up. Um, where, where you can be taken care of, that you don't need to put up with this in order to, to shop at LCS. And now, my hometown is about to have no comic shop. And all that makes me think is, we need to start a Simpleman's Comics comic shop because it's ridiculous. Somebody's got to serve these customers. That, that's, that's where my head's at with that because I, I can't believe that somebody could be that short-sighted. But that is my rant. Again, that shout out to Heroes Aren't Hard to Find in Charlotte, North Carolina. Somebody who does it right, which is why I make that extra drive to Charlotte. I'm sorry I couldn't make it there yesterday. But um, now we can talk about Walking Dead 193, now that I got that off my chest. You, I was venting in the group chat about that one. What you meant to say is, other than that, let's talk about the long term. <laughs> yeah, other than that, with that said. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the long term play, um, Walking Dead 193. Um I did go ahead and like spoil myself and go through the spoilers on the internet because I got to be able to talk about it here on the mic. You know, it's important. And obviously, this is the last issue of Walking Dead. Um, now, a lot of people have said, "Oh, get this and flip this real quick," because you know, you you're available to make money right now. Obviously, this is selling fifteen twenty dollars. Um, it is a quick flip, but again, guys, look at how much money you're making. You're not making a lot of money. Um, I don't know if if how long that's going to hold yes the print run is probably large but i look at this as a long-term play we've said robert kirkman has said amc is going to make the walking dead forever it's their flagship entity they've got spin-offs coming they've got movies coming and i think that this series is always going to be important i'm really bullish on issues 191 through 193 i think that while the first appearances may come and go in popularity Issue one and then the finale of this story are always going to be important. I think from what I read, they wrapped up the series pretty beautifully. I'm sure there's detractors to it. But, you know, if you've ever watched a series finale of a TV show, it's kind of hard to do it and make everyone happy. There's always going to be somebody who's going to complain or who's going to feel like they didn't get what they wanted out of it. It, um, it ended like Little Zombie House on the Prairie. Yeah, <laughs> not not really. I enjoy I enjoyed the ending, but I always wanted that. Um, what what caused it type thing? But right, we didn't get all of that answer. But you know, I know Robert Kirkman says he's done with it. 
But I just want to point out the beauty of a time jump is we could always go back to the time in between. And because we still don't know what caused it, it still leaves a prequel possibility open. Um, I'm not so sure we'll never see Walking Dead again. Um, I think that you never say never. I, I, I'm, I totally get him being burnt out. He's done this thing forever. Um, his life has been, right. His life has been walking dead. So that's when I graduated high school to put that into perspective. I turned 34 yesterday. So, you know, that's, that's how long he's been writing this book. So I totally get him being burnt out. He has the right to step away. He has the right to say no mas, I'm done. Um, but at the same point, feelings can change over time. So, you know, you may give him a couple of years and he may feel like, you know, I, well, you know, I, I want to revisit this or some story may pop into his head or he may be working on a TV show and he might get inspired or the movie. Anything's possible. But I think that if you look at like the, the long term history of classic series is series like one that comes to mind is Preacher. That last issue tends to hold weight. It tends to be one that people want and always find important. And then also, because people didn't see this coming, it slipped past people. So um, I think that the long-term value of this is there because we've, we've just got so much. It, Walking Dead isn't over. There's so much more Walking Dead to happen. It may just not happen in the pages of a comic book from Image Comics. But Walking Dead is not going to be gone from, from TV. It's not going to be gone from merchandising. You're going to see Walking Dead everywhere in the stores. Um, and I think that because of that, it, people are going to always want to come back to it. And I, it kind of makes me think of like spawn where spawn issues after they've kind of come out over time, they get bought up by collectors and they dry up. I think everybody's going to want to keep a copy of this. And I think that that's going to cause even the large print run of this issue copies to get pulled off the shelf. Another thing that's interesting is it's a square bound book. So... Yeah. As far as like graded copies, nine eight might not be enough. This might be more of a game of nine nines and ten O's, similar to Batman Damn. One guy's on uh, eBay guaranteeing a nine nine. Yeah, and shout out to our sponsor, Nick Dwartman, who's a hell of a presser. And even he says that guy is bold yeah. to take that shot. Because Nick said he feels good about getting some nine nines. He feels like it's gonna happen. But that guarantee game is dangerous. So um shout out to Nick who does it right who I know also will randomly send customers who pre-ordered a 9.8 and 9.9. But that has happened before. Um, so I know some customers who have posted on social media um, of that happening. So you know, I think Nick does it right. He has the right idea with it. Um, but yeah, I think that this book is a book that is going to be a great signature series book. I think it will make a, a, a great book signed by Robert Kirkman, uh, graded. I think it, it's a book that... It's going to be important forever. There's, it's not. We get a lot of books that come out. We talk about them on the bowl list. They're hot for a while, and then it, it's not important anymore. This book is always going to be important because it ends the Walking Dead story. Also, it could pop again later if the show ends up copying some of the same tropes. I say some because obviously Carl's dead on the show, so I don't want to spoil the issue. Uh, but you know, Carl's sort of essential to the whole process, but. <laughs> Things little, like a little bit, a little bit, yeah, a little, a little bit. But I think you could see that play out with Judith. Judith could be that Carl character. Um, the statue, some of those things could come into play um, in the future for Walking Dead, and it could repop this issue. Also, it's important to note they solicited a second print that I think they're going right to print quick with. So I think it's going to be like the 192 second print where. I'm interested to see what the cover art is going to be. Um, I have my own suspicions, but again, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, there's two images to me that are very powerful from what I've seen that I think would be great cover art. And um, But that's one to keep an eye out for. If you're like me and you missed out or you got hosed by some Tyler out there um, – this is the uh, this is the book to go ahead and pre-order that second print. Um, grab that second print. Um, and again, I, I know what the detractors are, but you just keep, same way we talk about Netflix. Uh, you just can't 
you can't underestimate the size of the Walking Dead fan base, the amount of Walking Dead merchandise that gets sold, and the fact that mainstream media is picking up on this being the final issue of The Walking Dead, even if they're completely getting the story wrong by saying Marvel canceled it or whatever. Again, holler at me. I got writers who can write that for you. <laughs>